Hi everybody and welcome back to my backyard once again. Long time no see, but we are back with a boom, very big box, but it's for a small drone, you already read the title, you know what's inside. Let's open it and see what iFlight sent this time. Boom! I don't know, this is for batteries probably, and once we remove it, you can already see it's full of goodies. First of all, the box for the Defender 16, we're gonna take a look at it in a moment. High quality USB-C to USB-C cable, why did they send this cable? Bag and inside it you see an iFlight branded power brick, it's a 100 watt USB-C, USB-C and USB-A, boom! It has the US plug, it's a shame because I live in Europe, but the European plug is bigger than this, so they cannot do this. We have another bag and inside, boom! This is a Defender 25 battery charger, but finally they added USB-C charging. Before you had to plug everything into a charger, it was a complicated mess, nobody want, wanted to go through. But now you remember the Defender 25, it has this kind of proprietary battery. Boom, you remove it, slot it in here, plug in, and finally you will be able to charge with USB-C. This is amazing for beginners that don't have to deal with chargers, but also if you are traveling with only this drone, you can pack very, very, very light and carry this one. And lastly, we got another battery, but this is a small one, because it's the Defender 16 Little 2S 900 milliamps battery. Look at this very little brick, it doesn't have any XT30 on it, only the balance plug. Now this is a very 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 proprietary battery. Time to finally open the box and inside you will find a carrying case for your drone. I always love when they go up in quality like this, very nice fabric, hard shell, high flight, very 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 good job and I don't know, I hope Everything will fit into it, the goggles and the radio and the drone of course, because it's a small drone and it will be so nice to go around with something so small to do FPV, I will love it. And before I open this bag and show you what's inside, please remember to like, subscribe and comment on this video, let me know what you think about this drone and about its specific batteries for it. I kind of love them, but of course you cannot reuse them on other drones, so pros and cons as always. Let's go! Time to unzip! <laughs> the bag and see what's inside. Boom! Everything is super well organized, nothing falls out of the box. Instructions, tools, the drone and the battery charger which is USB-C as well. And you can see the extra foam padding is for the Defender 20. This is the 16, the other one is a little bit bigger. Let's start from this side and then let's see the juicy stuff. Let's start with the paperwork, there is a lot of stuff, warranty card, stickers and a ton of instructions and safety warnings. You get a tool bag with extra screws, a screwdriver, propeller remover tool and hexagonal keys to service your drone, that's all you need. You get a set of extra HQ props, 1809 tri-blades for your drone. And lastly, this is to me one of the most interesting pieces in this bag, the charger. Look at this, take your battery, boom, plug it in, lights up green, plug it in, and you are ready to charge. Instead of doing pee 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 on your charger for 30 seconds every time you have to charge a battery. This is so convenient when you're done, take out, put in a new one. I mean, it makes its case, even if it's proprietary of course, this is super convenient. And now, and now let's talk about the really juicy stuff. You can see this is the Defender 16, let me start pressing the iFlight button here, once, twice, Boom! The drone turns on with the button, you can see the LEDs on the battery, this is very neat actually, and on the sides and on the bottom. The drone looks extremely good, especially with no cables running around, it's super neat, and let's turn off. Boom! Drone turns off and the battery turns off as well. I mean, I, I just love this thing, it feels a very nice bridge between regular FPV and you know more DJI user-friendly stuff that's super neat and well designed and I see a lot of calls to that, look at this, there is this door on the bottom, boom, you open it and you can access the USB and the micro SD slot and also you can see the 
O3 system is naked in this drone. It's already naked from the start, including the camera. As you can see, it's not your regular O3 camera. And I see it's suspended in some kind of grommet. So I hope there is no jello in this drone. But I fly it usually, you can trust them. There is no jello. I hope I don't eat my words later. This is the system to remove and put the battery on again. Super easy, super convenient, hassle-free, amazing. Let's talk specs about this drone. So it's 81 millimeter motor to motor and only 128 grams of weight with the battery included, which is a 900 milliamps to S again. And it's amazing, especially with all this extra plastic. I thought it would be a lot heavier. It's, it's very light actually. And the battery inside does another circuit with a storage discharger. So if you store it for a long time, it's gonna discharge automatically and preserve its um, health basically, which is again, DJI level of stuff. iFlight, amazing, amazing work on this system. The motors are 1002, 14,000 kV, and it's a F4 flight controller with 20 amps integrated ESC. Boom, you can see here the O3 camera lens and there are no antennas whatsoever because they are in the landing feet one and two. And also the receiver is located right here. You can see the antenna wires. This is an Express LRS. You can get it in TBS or also as I do, I'm gonna remove this and use the integrated receiver of the O3 camera because I use also the Avata so I only carry one radio. Otherwise, Express LRS is amazing. And all that's left to do now is charge this bad boy, connect it and let's go fly. See you later. And boom, it's finally bound and ready to fly. Actually, I had to wait a couple of weeks for a replacement charger because the test pilot one I had was not working, was not charging the batteries. And you know, there is not a really easy way to charge them without the proprietary adapter. And yeah, pros and cons. Pros, it works very good now, charges them quickly, 15 minutes and it's just painless. You pop them in, pop them out, they are ready. I hope iFlight makes a multiple charger because I would love to just pop three batteries in, four batteries in and have them charged in like an hour without reminding me every 15 minutes to just swap them. Good suggestion for you iFlight. And in the meantime, I learned how to address RGB LEDs. So basically the side ones, you have to use this button on the bottom this back one is controlled by Betaflight. The top one, you have to long press this button while it's on and then you can cycle through all the colors. So you can select a different color here, different color here and a different color on the back. It's green now and it's uh, dependent on the battery level. So you will go from green, yellow and red as you drain your battery. Very nice. Perfect. It's time to fly. I have the drone already armed because otherwise it overheats. Let's record. And let's go. I have the camera at like 10, 15 degrees. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so I expected it to be a little bit more silent. Makes kind of a little bit of noise. And I already see some chicken, so of course you know, it wouldn't be my channel if we didn't follow the chicken. It goes. It's not bad. It's, it's stable. Okay, when you accelerate, I can see a little bit of jello, which is not very good. Let me put it in acro. Okay, it's a little bit windy, I give you that, but... Okay, it's a 2S drone with a 900 milliamps on it. So of course it's not made to do this kind of stuff. But I'm gonna try anyway. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, what the hell? What the hell was that? Finding this drone will be a mess. Will be a mess, I already tell you. So, see you this afternoon, I guess. I'm super happy I managed to find it in like 15 minutes. It was super easy because the buds are on here. Screams like hell and I could do it from here just 
focusing on the, something faintly beeping in the distance. Kind of easy. Thank you iFlight for the very loud buzzer. And the drone is pretty much unscathed. Like it didn't care about crashing from like 20 meters. Of course it crashed on grass, but wow. I guess it's a good crash test, most people will say. The battery even didn't fling out, which was a concern I had. This clamp is very strong. And actually, I think I know the cause of the issue here, because uh, the propeller is missing, and I think it exploded. It exploded and the drone spun out of control, and that's what happened in the video. Because I had video, and so it means I had the RC signal as well. And also, look at this. This is a propeller I have in my basement. It's not the one that crashed, but basically, when I was... Uh, removing and putting it on again this broke very very easily so i think they are a little bit brittle now one is random two kind of starts behaving becoming a behavior you know and also i flight sent this kind of propellers from gem fun so i believe they also know they are kind of brittle and i don't know if they're gonna ship the new drones with these ones but i'm gonna switch to these ones they have a much wider hub and they should be more resistant. So, switch the props and fly again. Let's try flying with the gem fan propeller. Hope they don't break me there and hope also the jello is resolved. Let's see. The tuning is wrong, of course, because I changed the propellers. Oh, wow. The recover on that is a cine whoop. It's not made for acro and maybe you shouldn't do it on this drone. Because the 900 milliamps battery kind of heavy. There is a little bit of wobble, that's it. The drone in angle mode has no issues. So yeah, when, when there is no wind at all, it's nice. A little bit of wind starts uh, making it wobble and uh, it's a cine whoop. So don't try pulling out, you see? And the battery is also kind of discharged, so I have to land. Three minutes of flying kind of pushing opinion on my first and half flight so the first half the one that we had the bad crash was um, it was flying better because it's tuned for the high flight propellers and maybe i was just unlucky and i damaged the propeller putting them in and out i don't know i'm gonna try a fresh set now because yesterday it was flying very good the drone is tuned for that but as soon as I started applying power, we saw some jello and also the propeller exploded. So I have to check another flight and give it, I'll give it another opportunity to shine. The second flight with the gem fan propeller, it was a little bit wobbly because it's not tuned for that. And I will not tune it because I'm going to show you the drone as it comes. Let's fly with a fresh set of HQ high flight propellers. Let's see how it goes. I hope it's solved. Yeah, you can see with the original propellers, it's a lot more stable, a lot more. Because the tuning is perfect for them. And now, yeah, this is a perfect chicken chasing machine. I'm noticing the signal is not amazing, usually is uh, a little bit better. These uh, antennas, planar antennas, they are low on the drone and maybe they are not transmitting full power. Yeah, this is nice now to have fun with the chicken. You see how stable it is? Yeah, it flies much better. Okay, let's try pushing. And I see some vibrations, but I don't know if that's jello or not. Maybe it's just... It will not matter in the stabilization. Maybe it's low frequency enough, it will not matter. And now it's much better than before. Whoa. So, I'm gonna try pushing again, hoping that the... Oh, wow, okay. Hoping that the propellers don't break. But it seems like... Uh, yeah, it's still a little bit heavy to recover, but the original propellers are much better. I hope it doesn't crash again. Oh my god! Wow, 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 wow. Of course, I'm not facing the right direction, but I'm full power. I'm FCC on this drone, and usually with uh, the other O3 systems, I can go much, 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 
more careless behind these trees. It feels like 25 milli, milliwatts. Yeah. And, and winter is approaching. There is not much water in the leaves. So I don't know. But now it feels... Okay, now, now this drone is convincing me. I mean, it's not an acro machine, but what do you expect on a two... No, it's not even a two inches. 1.6 inches. I mean, yeah, it's not bad. I wish the signal was a tiny bit better. But for flying outdoors with such a tiny drone, it's not bad. Maybe it's making a little bit too much noise for my taste. Are there any chickens around? No. Yeah, if you fly slowly, maybe put it in angle as well, it becomes a super tame drone with the original propellers. It doesn't have jello, so far I don't see it at least. And uh, maybe it was an unbalanced propeller before. 3 minutes 40 of flying. Not bad. Yeah, now we, we did a little bit of acro, but the original propellers are also more efficient, looks like. Quite a bit. But if you fly slow, five, maybe also six minutes if you're flying indoors, maybe you can get them. You see, yeah, the signal is not incredible. Time to land. And we are at five minutes, as I was telling you. Probably if you only fly slow, six, seven minutes, you can do it on the original propellers. And with this latest flight, finally, I am satisfied with this drone. It works good as a CineWoop and the iFlight HQ propellers are the way to go. We did five minutes with also a little bit of acro, so not bad at all. Let's talk about pros and cons of this drone. So first of all, the pros, it's a beautiful drone. iFlight always nails their designs. It looks industrial, it looks professional, it looks serious, and it doesn't look like a flying bomb. You know, you don't have wires hanging around the battery, it's super integrated into it. The battery is both a pro and a con, of course, because being proprietary, uh, it's nice for beginners and for people who want to fly hassle-free. This discharges automatically if you don't fly for long enough, which is amazing. Your battery are gonna last much longer, it's not bad. You can charge them easily, USB-C, you are traveling, and you don't need to plug wires every time. It's much faster and integrated. I like it a lot. It also has LEDs on the battery, LEDs here. It's very, very nice. The buzzer, I wasn't gonna mention the buzzer, but it saved the drone and the review because if it didn't have a buzzer, I would still be looking for it and I don't know even if I would have found it eventually. So the buzzer, very nice addition on this class of drones. I never see buzzers. The battery life is a lot. You are looking at 900 milliamps of juice and you're flying for five, six minutes outside and indoors for like seven minutes. So it's not bad at all. Also, it flies very good for what it is. A 1.6 inches, you don't expect it to do miracles, you don't expect it to pull crazy acro. But as a CineWoop, flying level, flying stable, with a little bit of breeze, today was flying very good with the right propellers in good shape. And super precise, super stable, I like it. I'm gonna put it in the pros. It has almost unnoticeable jello, like, I saw a little bit, but I really had to widen the screen and uh, zoom in to see the little bit of vibration on the horizon. So I put it in the pros. The other drones I've tried, most of them have much, much worse. On a 2S and also on this class, I'm not like the Pavo Pico is a jello machine. And iFlight put a little bit of soft mount in the camera screw. So maybe you just have to untighten it and tighten it to find the right combination. But I'm saying it has almost no jello. So another pro of this drone is it's kind of resistant in my opinion because we crashed for no... Oh my God, I dropped it again. <laughs> Unbelievable. I didn't do it on purpose. So two crash tests. Anyway, it crashed from 20 meters on grass, of course. If you do it on concrete, expect something to break probably. But the plastic is nice, absorbs the impact. Not bad. Talking about cons, I'm gonna start with the battery, of course. It's proprietary, it has pros, but it also has many drawbacks. If you lose your drone and if you bought a lot of these batteries, you cannot use it on any other drone. If you lose your charger or if it breaks, you cannot charge them. I mean, yeah, you have to commit to it and you have to still keep buying a couple of these to make sure you don't lose your investment, in my opinion. Other than that, it's easy and convenient to use, but 
This is easy and convenient to use as well. This is the Defender 25 battery and it still has an XT30. I use this battery on the Defender and on other drones like an Explorer 4 inch. Still, it's a very nice battery, fits, is long, not bad. You can use it on, an, on other drones. I charge it with my regular chargers because uh, it's easy. I can multiple charge them. I made an adapter for the balance port and it's very nice. And it still looks nice when you put it on. This is two clicks, click one and click two. This is only one click. So, I mean, yeah, it's a little bit more convenient, but this is much, much more versatile battery. So I wish they go with this and I don't know, maybe use a XT60 that slots in. So it's one click, but it's still compatible with other drones will be the best. Another con of the battery and the design in general is it has extra circuits inside, the LEDs, LEDs here, extra plastic. It's a little bit heavier than it should be. Worth mentioning, the propellers are maybe a little bit brittle. There is cause for concern, because when I was putting one in, it broke on me, split in half with my finger forts. So maybe it's brittle, the other one broke while flying. So two starts becoming a trend. I don't know if these new propellers they sent are, are better. The ones I had maybe were test prototypes. I don't know, because I always received the drone a little bit before and there may be some issues, you know, but with the propellers like this, fresh set works very good and that's all that matters. Maybe get an extra couple set of propellers if you get the drone. And lastly, last con is the antennas. Usually I can fly no problem around the house. Today I was having some freezes also behind those trees. I was having some freezes. Even if I'm standing here, it's a different position than usual. I fly from here and I never have these problems. So the antennas are a little bit weaker than usual. And that's pretty much it for the review of the Defender 16 from iFlight. It does what it has to do very good. It's a cine hoop, indoor cine hoop. You can also fly indoors a little, outdoors a little bit. Still does it, it's still stable and flies good. And in my opinion, it's the best flying and recording 1.6 inches out there. Because the other one, there is only another one, is the Pavo Pico. And it flies words and records words because it's a jello machine. I could not fix. I don't know how, but I still could not fix to this day. I tried using it, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. This seems much better from the start. But of course you have to like the proprietary battery system and you have to commit to it. But maybe if you are a beginner, if you don't want the hassle to buy a charger, to learn how to charge the batteries, maybe this is a good way into FPV. The drone is light, it doesn't hurt on body, resistant. You can learn FPV and then on another drone you will make the step of learning battery management. And as always, remember to like, subscribe and comment on this video. Let me know what you think about this drone and if you agree with my opinions on it. Uh, let me know also if you have one, if you tried it. And as always, if you need to buy something, click on the links down in the description below. You help this channel a lot and you help me make more reviews. Um, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Stay safe and happy flying. Bye.